did a great job back there. We love you. Uh, I love this song. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. And uh, this is what our text today. We just want to celebrate uh, Jesus Christ today. And uh, we're going to go keep on in Luke. We're pressing on through uh, Luke. And uh, we're going to finish up this chapter 4. What a fantastic chapter 4 has been the temptation of Jesus right out of his back, right out of his back in that high moment and all that happened there. And then uh, he, he goes into that temptation and then he goes home to his, uh, his hometown and shares there and reads the prophecy of the Messiah and says, today is fulfilled. And everything was going great until Jesus made it crystal clear that he's not just the Messiah for his hometown. He's not just the Messiah for the Jewish people. He has come to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, to the whole world. Jesus is uh, the Savior of the world. And when he, when he shared that information with his hometown group, they, they pushed him all the way up to a hilltop. And they were going to throw him over and kill him for, for saying that, that the Messiah was for all. And now he comes into uh, chapter, in chapter 4. And uh, now he's in Capernaum, a uh, town in Galilee, and you're gonna, we're going to find the exact opposite experience. And I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful that verse 31, we have these accounts of Jesus, a Lord over all, uh, that came right after that horrid experience in his hometown. Let's read that. We're in Luke chapter 4, uh, beginning in verse 31. Then... He went down to Capernaum after that horrible experience in his hometown in Nazareth where they were going to throw him down the cliff. After that, he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath day he began to teach the people. And they were amazed at Jesus' teaching because his message had authority. In the synagogue there was a, a demon-possessed man spirit evil and he cried out at the top of his voice what do you want with us jesus of nazareth have you come to destroy us i know who you are the holy one of god be quiet jesus said sternly come out of him then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him and all the people were amazed and they said to each other, what is this teaching with authority and power? He gave orders to evil spirits and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. And Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. This is Simon Peter. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever. And they asked Jesus to help her. So Jesus bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she got up at once and began to wait on them. And when the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all the people who had various kinds of sickness and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people shouting, You are the Son of God. But Jesus rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because... The demons knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him. and When they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Heavenly Father, these are amazing stories. Uh, they are so amazing to us in our uh, world today. And we read these. We need your spirit to show us what does this mean? What do these stories mean in Luke chapter 4? Who is this Jesus? And what does he mean to us today? We ask the Holy Spirit to convict us of our lack of faith and belief in your word, and we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit today and send us out into this world after this event today, preaching the good news 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We read these uh, stories, these accounts in Luke, and we go, yeah, yeah, that's that's Jesus. That was Galilee. That was 2,000 years ago. But, but what does it mean to me now? This casting out demons and they're shouting at Jesus and this walking through and, and touching people and healing them. I don't, I don't see any of that. That must have happened a long time ago. And uh, we, we, ask, uh, we ask ourselves, um, uh, is there really demon possession today? Is, is there really a Satan? Because we've got Satan all categorized. He's the little guy in the red suit and the horns and the, got a little pitchfork and he's funny and we have all these movies all the time about uh, Satan and all that <coughs> stuff and, and head spin and all that and, and it's a movie thing it's, it's a game board it's a, a, a that and TV has all these shows about witches now and they're funny and they're beautiful and they're funny so is there really Satan are there really demons at work today We've had this week of prayer. I, I wanted to read, uh, read from many of them, but uh, day six was about Matt and Amanda Hayden on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. And they talk about this Indian reservation is, is the poorest of all the Indian reservations. They don't have a big casino there and all the houses. They're just poor. They suffer from spiritual poverty. Uh, 3% of this reservation claim to even know about Jesus, claim to know the Lord. And it's a dire situation. Uh, Matt and Amanda have been there for 10 years, and they've, they've never started this church there, been missionaries for 10 years. The Lakota people struggle with unemployment, overwhelming sense of defeat, hopelessness, high rates of depression, alcoholism, drug addiction, physical abuse, and suicide. And we know these things happen. These, these happen here in Nashville. But, but what, grabbed my, what grabbed us as we read that the other morning, the suicide rate among the youth, the, the young people of this Indian reservation where they're serving, is 150 times the national suicide rate. 150 times. There are young people in at this reservation who are growing up in this poverty are killing themselves. Is there a Satan working today? Satan comes to kill and destroy. That's what Jesus said. I've come to bring life, abundant life. Satan comes to kill and destroy. <clears throat> I think Matt and Amanda Hayden would answer yes. Satan is alive and well. And demons are real. And I'm sure they have seen uh, the evidence of that. But I want to share with you that, that Jesus, that Jesus in the Bible, is Lord over all today. Yes. We don't have to be afraid of Satan. We don't have to be afraid of demons. We don't have to live in fear. We have abundant life through Jesus Christ. Um, the, the Bible teaches, and Paul said in 2 Corinthians, that Satan is the God of this age. <clears throat> He's the God of this age. And if you look at America right now, and what's going on in America, we used to be one nation under God. It's a small G now. It's, it's, I feel sometimes like our nation has come under an evil influence in, in so many categories, in so many areas. And Revelation 12 says that Satan deceives the whole world. He's a liar and he's the author of lies from the very beginning with Adam and Eve. He, he, he said to Eve, Eve, look at this, this fruit. God said, she said, God said not to eat that fruit. And, and Satan said, did he really say that? Well, what he meant was this. And so Satan has been deceiving and uh, there's just no reason to fear that. 1 John 3, 7 and 8. 1 John 3, 7 and 8. You need that verse. You need that Bible verse uh, written out on the card. Uh, if you're afraid or worried. Uh, 1 John 3, 7. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. See? 
Do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, as he, Jesus, is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning of time. Now look at this. 1 John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Amen? Amen. The reason Jesus came was to destroy the work of the devil. And he has done it. There, there may have been some joy in his heart at the uh, Last Supper, at the trial of Jesus, and certainly at the crucifixion, but there was some surprise when Jesus arose from the dead and came out of that tomb. Victorious, the Bible says, over sin and death. Yes. Once and for all. Once and for all. We serve a living Savior. So James, we talked about James 4, 7. That was a few weeks ago. We were working our way through James. <clears throat> Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have that ability and that power. There's, there is not a single born-again believer who has to say, the devil made me do it. None, none of us has to say that. The devil didn't make us do anything. We serve a living Savior. We've been singing these beautiful, beautiful songs about the name of Jesus. A few things I want you to see in this passage about demons. The demons know who Jesus is. Did you know that? The, the demons, Satan, they know who Jesus is. Our text, verse uh, Luke 4, verse 34, when the demon came out of this poor man in the synagogue that day, he said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. I, mean, I, I know you're the Messiah. Jesus did not want the testimony of demons. He always told them, be quiet. He didn't want them testifying. He wanted us to testify of that. And on down in verse 41, uh, he was healing, and uh, demons came out of people. And when the demons came out, they shouted, they shouted, You are the Son of God, the demons. And he rebuked them and didn't want them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah. Demons know who Jesus is. And, and no demon can stand before the name of Jesus. We just say this song, the name of Jesus, if someone comes up and confronts you and says they're demon-possessed or they're worried about demons, you can speak the name of Jesus over that person mm -hmm. and free them. Judy and I had that experience just recently. Just recently. We met a couple. And they said, they said we're demon-possessed. Mm -hmm. And they wanted us to pray. Well, I didn't, we didn't grab Judy in the car and go home. <laughs> we stood there over them and we read Romans chapter 8, my favorite chapter in the Bible. And we prayed in the name of Jesus, and they stood up and they said they had been free. Amen. It, 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 you can do that. We can rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. Don't take this on by yourself. Another thing that demons know, demons know that they're going to spend all eternity in hell. They know that. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. The devil, we've already shared the devil knows the Bible. He knows Bible verses. He knows this verse. Revelation 20.10, the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan knows that Amen. the time is coming when he and all of his demons and all of them are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Satan knows that. And if you're, being, if you're being bothered by Satan, some people are. Some people see the devil. Some people are bothered by him. Just remind them of this verse. To say, I'm really not interested. Remind them of that verse. And then a, a third thing I want you to know about this, this particular, uh, these demons, is that Jesus is Lord over Satan and demons. He's got the power over them. I love Philippians 2, 9-11. But there's a phrase in there that we forget. There's a little phrase in there that we bypass. Philippians 2, 9 to 11, is talking about Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Therefore, God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on Jesus the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, at the name 
of Jesus, every knee should bow. Look, in heaven, that's all the angels, every knee shall bow on earth, that's every person that's ever lived, but we forget the rest of that. And under the earth, every knee, every demon is going to kneel before Jesus Christ and say, Jesus Christ is Lord one day. Hallelujah. What a glorious day. Mm -hmm. What an amazing day. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It may be 2,000 more years. We don't know. But Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, every knee is going to bow. Amen. And declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Our demons, our demons are real. This, isn't that an old story from the Bible? I read this uh, yesterday or the day before in WKNR News. A busy weekend in Nashville. Uh, I don't know if you know about this, but we're going to have a basketball game. Some kind of big basketball game downtown this week. I mean, you know it's, it's already happened. Oh, it's already happened? Yes, the last one's today. Did we win? Possibly. <laughs> Sports is my thing. I walk. Um, so I read that. There, there, are, there were going to be thousands of people downtown. Did it really happen? Yeah. That kind of ruins my illustration. <laughs> There's still more to go. There's one more game today, he said. They're all excited. Nashville's excited. Downtown's excited. It's spring break. A lot of college kids come to Nashville. Human trafficking hmm. will be at its peak last week, this week. Human trafficking is a real fancy word for people who take homeless children and care for them and then use them and sex trafficking in Nashville, Tennessee. And they shared about this, the basketball tournament, a lot of people here, a lot of money, and, and they told about Mary Trapnell is the founder of Nashville Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition. I'd love for that of you to find out about that, if we can do anything to help. <coughs> Desire to have a good time sets the stage for human traffic industry to flourish. Businessmen are coming to town. Lots of money, good time. They recruit girls from all across the state and out of the state. And the article tells how you can identify. If you think you see a girl in need, how to identify them. Satan is real. Mm -hmm. Satan is here. He's busy. And I just, I just want to share with you again and again and again and again. We do not have to fear. Amen. We do not have to fear Satan or demons. Jesus is Lord over all the evil in this world. And you can ask all the questions you want. Well, why doesn't he fix it? Why is there evil? Why am I sick? Why is this happening? You can ask all those questions because Satan wants you to question that. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? When you get, when those questions come, well, if, if God is so powerful, why didn't he fix it? Mm -hmm. Heal everybody. Why, why didn't Jesus? That's, those questions are from Satan. Just like Eve. Did God really say that? You see? What we need is, is the unbounded faith. Belief that, that's strong than anything. Jesus is Lord over all. Jesus, the second thing G, in the text, Jesus is Lord over all sickness. He is Lord over all sickness, illness. People are here uh, who, who people are not here today because of illness. I want to say to them, Jesus is Lord over that illness. Well, then why doesn't he heal me? Uh, I've prayed. I've asked for healing. You've asked for healing. Why doesn't he heal it? Because we we pray in the the prayer is our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's how we pray. We don't say, God, you're God, you're the healer. Do this, do this, and do it now. We pray because we're commanded to, and we always pray, Your will be done. And we don't Amen. know what that will is. We don't know what that will is. Jesus heals loneliness in this in this passage, and uh, there is there are 22 accounts in in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. There are 22 accounts of Jesus healing, and most of those are with marginalized people, outcasts, lepers who are outcasts, uh, blind people. Our Sunday school lesson today: a man who was sitting by the pool, shepherd's pool, for 38 years, marginalized. That's in all that room of all the sick people. Jesus went to him. Do you want to be healed? Take up your bed and walk. And, and that marginalized, that loneliness that people have, 
Jesus heals loneliness in people. These, these demon-possessed people, they didn't have friends, they didn't have family. He heals. His, his name, Je don't forget, this is, this is a Christmas thing, but don't forget, Jesus' name is Emmanuel. Isaiah 41. Jesus' name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's his name. In the Bible, but inside of us. John chapter 14, Jesus is comforting his disciples. John 14, Jesus had told his disciples, I'm going away. He meant <clears throat> crucifixion. And then he meant uh, being ascended into heaven. He's going back to the Father. Excuse me. And he's comforting them. His disciples, where are you going? Can we come with you? Don't leave us. We can't live without you. John 14, 23. Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. The Father will love them. Look, first, John 14, 23. We, my Father and I, we will come to them who obey and believe in us. We will come to them and make our home with them. The God of this universe and Jesus our Savior have made their home in our hearts because we believe and we obey and follow the Lord. We are never alone. Never alone. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. There's no fear in the Christian's heart. All the stuff is going on. There's a little fear. I'm driving down Old Hickory, trying to get home, and you know there's two lanes of traffic, and this uh, sports car goes flying by at 90 miles an hour. There's, there's natural response to fear, but not fear for me, not fear of what is going to happen, because God has made His home in my heart. He comforts His disciples, and yes, Jesus is uh, Lord over the sickness of sin. Jesus is uh, not just Lord; Jesus is Savior. He died on the cross for our sins. Uh, in Luke chapter 4, uh, 18, he, he uh, healed the paralyzed man. And he said to him, when, when he was healing him of this paralysis, he said something so interesting. He said, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. That, that, raised, that, that made the Pharisees mad that he could claim to do that. But at, at the root of all of these problems is sin in our lives. And sin is there from Satan, and it's sin in our lives is there to destroy us and people. And Jesus is Lord over that. 1 Peter 2.24 1 Peter 2.24 is a quote from Isaiah, but it says Jesus, he himself bore our sins. Jesus took our sins in his body on the cross and it says, by his wounds, Jesus' wounds on the cross, by his wounds, you are healed. It might not be the way I want to be healed. It may not be what I'm thinking is best for me. But I can be healed from sin and destruction. All sin is trying to destroy. And we can be healed from that. Jesus is Lord over all sickness. And then Jesus is Lord over all physical ailments. Um, our, our text was touching Peter's mother-in-law. And then going out and touching and healing those, those poor people. But why didn't he just speak the word and heal everybody in the world? That's, that's from Satan. Those questions are from Satan. Did, Jesus, did God really say that? You see? How, how that doubt, any doubt... Is that from that? Jesus heals. Um, we question. Uh, there's some that say, you know, that was that was during Jesus' time, that that healing, where Jesus healed. That was during Jesus' time. But after after he ascended to heaven, that period of time is over. There are people that believe that. Christians believe that. Well, I just I just want to show you. I just want to show you very quickly uh, in, in uh, Acts chapter nine, verse thirty-two. Acts chapter nine. Acts chapter 9, Jesus has died on the cross. He's been buried for three days. He has risen. He's, he's shown himself to his disciples. Jesus has ascended into heaven. By Acts chapter 9, the Holy Spirit has come.
Now I want to show you something so important. You, we've got to get this point this morning. Acts, <clears throat> Acts chapter 9, verse 32. Peter traveled about the country. He went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Elida. There he found a man named Aeneas, who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. And immediately Aeneas got up, and all those who lived in Elida and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. That's so important. He, Peter didn't say, in my power as the father of the church and apostle, I heal you. He said to this man, Jesus Christ heals you. And we can say that. We can say that today. <clears throat> we can be with Brother Richard. We can be with these people that are here today and are suffering. And we can hold their hands and we can say, we can read that verse and we can say, Jesus Christ heals you. Maybe it's not the way we want or the way they want, but Jesus Christ has the power to heal according to his will. And then the last thing, we're out of time here, but I want to share this last thing. I'm sorry. Allergies. Jesus is Lord over allergies. <laughs> Jesus is Lord over the gospel. That gospel message, that preaching. And we, we're, so, we're so confused in Baptist churches, we think this is preaching. It's a preacher who's been to seminary and been ordained and comes at, uh, on Sundays and preaches a sermon. That's not preaching. Preaching is you sharing some word about Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And in our gospel, it says Jesus had to leave. He had to proclaim the good news to the kingdom because that's why I was sent. Well, in Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verse 42, the Holy Spirit comes on the, the disciples. Jesus has, has now departed bodily. He's gone into heaven. The Holy Spirit has come, Acts chapter 2. And now these apostles filled, are filled with the Holy Spirit. And it, it, said, it says daily, Acts 5, 42, daily in the temple and every house they ceased not to teach and preach. Jesus Christ. You mean that? You mean the apostles? Everyone. Everyone who believed in Jesus and received the Spirit of God was preaching and sharing and witnessing about Jesus Christ. I think that the question that uh, the, the, the closing question for us and for those listening around the world and for those over here in this apartment complex. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? See? That's what this is all about. Is Jesus Lord over your life? Well, he's not. I, I believe in Jesus. I receive Jesus. And I've been baptized. I've been baptized. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you've been baptized. I'm not saying that you believe in Jesus. I'm asking you, in the name of Jesus Christ, is Jesus your Lord over your life? Every thought, everything you do. I'll give you a great illustration of what I mean. This, it was yesterday in the news, Nashville, WKRN News. It's the most, um, it's the most incredible story of lordship. Um, the, a 16-year-old girl is on trial. She's going to be on trial. This year, -year -old girl. The judge will determine that her name is Isabel. Will she be tried as an adult or a juvenile? That's the question that's going to be in court. She's accused of stabbing a 14-year-old girl named Molly Powell to death at a Walmart on Dickerson Pike in June of 2022, last June. The 16-year-old girl stabbed to death the 14-year-old girl. The grieving father finds himself at crossroads between the court system and his word. Who is this? <laughs> Molly Powell was a cheerleader at Bellevue Middle School, that's where our grandson goes. She was the life of the party. Her father is Larry Powell. Larry Powell said, losing a daughter, I wish that pain on no one, it hurts. A few months before that, he lost his 22-year-old son. He was, he was shot, 19-year-old son, by a 19-year-old in North Nashville. 
He lost his son to violence and his daughter. And so Pal has turned his heartache into action, and he's dedicated to breaking the violence system in Nashville. He's a mentor in a group called 413 Strong, 413 Strong here in North Nashville. And they help men with troubled past turn their lives around. So that's been his work. And now uh, this girl is on trial for killing his daughter, his 14 year old daughter. And he's an advocate for second chance. He, he said, and this was in, in, in the news, I couldn't believe it. I'm honestly going to pray for her, the girl that murdered his daughter. The decision is now in the hands of the court, but Powell's heart is in the hands of the one up above. For me to preach it and to teach it and for it to smack me in the dead in the face, I think this man is known by the fruits as he bears his word. Here's a man of unspeakable sorrow and pain and has given his life now to helping men uh, as they come out of prison. And this girl's on trial. He's going to be there. And he's praying for her. He has forgiven her. And he's praying for her. That, that man knows Jesus amen. as Savior and Lord. Yes, amen. And he's living in that. I saw an example of that here in our church. We had an event. We had a, we had a broken family. And we had an event. Uh, we did some uh, work with, with different people. And I saw... I saw a family member who had every right to shout out something ugly and mean. When, that, when, the, when the person came in, I saw that saint greet him and smile and say something nice. That was so hard. The pain is so deep. But Jesus was Lord of her life. And she was able to stand there and see the person and greet him and smile. And I know she's praying for him. Because Jesus is Lord. It works. This is where it's, this is where it's at. This is how we experience God. He's not just in this, this book, this old book from 2,000 years ago. Jesus is Lord over all. Amen. Is he Lord over your life? Let's stand together for a word of prayer. Forever and ever. Father, we thank you for your word. It is alive. Your word is, your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. We feel it in our hearts. We feel it. And we need your Holy Spirit to teach us and comfort us. We have worries. We have fears. We know where they come from, the evil one. But you are Lord over all. And we declare right now with all our heart, mind, soul, and body, Jesus is Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat>